understanding cost accounting cost per equivalent unit. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And a good source for these cost accounting concepts is Chapter 20 of PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, a pretty good website. Let's go back to what we were discussing in the prior video, which is equivalent units of production. Just a short review. Equivalent units. How do we measure costs on goods that are not complete? We use equivalent units, which is defined as physical units expressed in terms of a finished unit. So the name of the game is finished units, and here's an example. The sewing department has 10 units. We use pairs of jeans in the Levi's factory that are 40% complete. We multiply 10 units times 40% complete. We come up with four equivalent units. In other words, we've completed the work and incurred the cost necessary to complete four pairs of jeans in the sewing department. So think about how much work is done and how much cost has been incurred. One other challenge we saw last time, direct material and direct labor costs may not be incurred at the same time. So the rate at which those costs are incurred may not be equal. We're going to talk about a new concept now, cost per equivalent unit. We consider the number of items in production and the percentage they're complete. For example, we saw in an Excel slide that we were transferring to the next department in the process, the dye department, 700 equivalent units of direct material. That we saw already. Something new is cost per equivalent unit. How much in dollars do we assign each equivalent unit of production? So far, we've only talked about units and amount of costs incurred, but we have not talked about dollar costs yet. So we're going to connect those two in the videos in this example. So the formula for cost per equivalent unit, direct material total costs in dollars divided by equivalent units. So it's dollars divided by units. I'm going to flip over to Excel, and I want to go back to something we saw last time. This is where we calculated equivalent units, and you'll remember starting at the top left, we're going to transfer out to the next department 700 units, and you'll see that it's 700 across the board for materials, labor, and overhead because we're only transferring out those that are 100% complete. Ending work and process in blue is 800 units, but they're in various stages of completion. For direct material, 400 units, direct labor, 640, factory overhead, 640. So we're not done with the work and process units yet. Here's a news. <clears throat> spreadsheet, excuse me. This takes costs and looks at the dollar cost compared to the equivalent units. You'll see beginning work in process 70,000, units started in production 120,000 for a total of 190,000 in the left hand column. We've allocated costs to the different departments. Here's how much cost we incurred for buying materials, paying labor people, overhead. And then in blue, and I'll put the cursor here, you'll see that we have equivalent units of production. And that agrees to the prior page. And we're going to take the cost, which you'll see an A off to the far right hand side for the, the row with cost. The equivalent units of production is B, and we're going to come up with costs per equivalent unit, which is A divided by B. If you flip back to the prior slide, here's the 1100 to 1340, 1100 to 1340 on this slide. So what we come up with in the last row that's in green is cost per equivalent unit. For each unit we produce, it's $51.82 of direct material, for example, $28.36 for overhead. We can add those three costs together and come up with a cost per unit of $151. That's all three costs. Conversion cost per unit, you can see that at the top of the spreadsheet, direct labor and factory overheads conversion costs. So we can combine them in different ways. Cost per unit, $151. Conversion cost, $99. 
So finally, our cost allocation. How much in dollars are we transferring to the dye department, the next department? Well, it's the 700 units at the $151 entire cost. We'll multiply those together to come up with about $105,000 in costs being transferred for 700 units, and we're assuming those units are completely done. We've got some work in process that remains in the sewing department. <coughs> $51.82 is material. $99 is the conversion, the direct labor, and the overhead. Let's flip back to the prior slide so you can see that. Here's the $51 direct material. The sum of these two is the $99.25 conversion costs. So we're going to take those costs and multiply them by the equivalent units we found a few slides back, 46640. Multiplying those together, we are come up with the total costs that remain in the sewing department for the items that we haven't finished yet. So the equivalent units, 46640, was two slides ago. The 9925 we saw on the prior slide. So what have we come up with? We've come up with 105749 we're transferring to the dye department in costs. We've got about 84248 in dollars that are remain in the department for goods that we haven't finished yet. I'm going to flip back to PowerPoint. That's the end of part six. You'll find part seven on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. A complete list of videos will be on our website. We have live tutoring and chat at stltest.net. And we'll see you next time.